597, St. Mary's County Bill. Delegate Morgan, come on down. Thank you, Madam Chair, Ways and Means Committee. I told you you see a lot of me this session, <laughs> a lot of these local bills. Being a commissioner of county, I'm, I'm going to be in front of you all a lot. So I'm back again. So we have a, a bill, 597, <clears throat> dealing with the commis commissioner's election uh, method. It's a straw ballot question. Taking a voter referendum to the people of uh, St. Mary's, ask them how they feel about their election districts. I know this committee just got finished hearing a bill hearing about a week and a half ago over Delegate Crosby's bill, HB 447. Um, people that have been on this committee are in the General Assembly the last couple of years. Uh, I know the Madam Vice Chair knows this very well, the old House 655 that we debated, I think, on the floor for like four days. So why am I here, right? What's the reason? And um, I was always told when you put a piece of legislation in, you, you know, you try to say, what problem are you solving? And the problem is that we've had this bill put in there uh, a couple times, this is the second year, calling for single member districts in commissioner counties. Um, districts where the county is divided up by districts based on geographical regions, uh, requiring commissioners to live in those regions, but is really voted on by the entire county. And that's come under some fire. Uh, I've watched a bill hearing for a couple weeks ago in Ways and Means over House Bill 447. And um, look, majority of the people that are having a problem with the, this type of voting um, seems to be centered around one county, the county that I represent, St. Mary's County. So we drafted up a ballot question because I think it would be almost unconscionable to pass HB 447, Delegate Crosby's bill, and take voter rights away from the voters of St. Mary's County. For the last two years, all I've been hearing is election interference and threat to democracies. Well, we actually have a bill that would take voting rights away from our citizens without allowing them to weigh in first. So what we've done is take this language for a ballot question. It's almost copy verbatim uh, from a ballot question that was asked of the voters in Queens Anne's County in 2016. And the way I see this working is that the voters want to change their elections. Uh, this would be asking 2024 election. The voters want to change their elections in St. Mary's County. We'd have to come back in 2025 um, and follow that up with some legislation, uh, much like the marijuana referendum that was on the ballot this past year. It's going to be followed up with legislation. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm sure there's probably going to be a few. Madam Vice Chair. Hi, Delegate. Good hey, to see good. you. Yes, you are correct. You and I spent a lot of time on the floor a couple of years ago. Um, but I feel we became such good friends. We really did. We bonded. <laughs> we bonded. Um, I, do, I do have a couple of questions. Sure, about I'd be happy this to bill. answer them. Um, can you tell us more about what a straw election looks like? So I, when we were drafting this legislation, we have always thought it would be a good idea to have it, um, the voters uh, weigh in on this. And um, back, remember, two years, we tried that as a, a floor amendment. And I tried to work that out with the, the bill sponsor before. And just I, I just think that when you're taking votes away from your citizens, it would be helpful that they voice their opinion um, beforehand. And on this, we kind of deferred back to DLS and what we should do. And they were like, well, you need to ask a straw question. So... You know, I'm not thrilled with the title of this bill. I thought it would come up more of a voter, voter referendum, but I guess re referendums are reserved for the entire state. This is how it would be done, and once the public weighed in on it, I mean, look, the elected officials would have to change it at that point. Um, and, and the good news is we have time to do that, right? I mean, this is 2023. I mean, this would be on the 24 ballot, and we'd have plenty of time before this would ever come up and to uh, impact anyone in our county in 2026. So is this something where we're using, because just the, the term straw, I, I, as you mentioned, I think this is sort of unique. Are you envisioning that we're using 
voting equipment, people are going to the polls, we're yeah. doing early voting. So this is this is something that would be would it be on the ballot with the yes. with the presidential and other candidates? Y or yes. it's a separate kind of No, yes ma'am. It okay. um it would be on the ballot, just like the referendums that we've seen um, with marijuana last year, it would only be in St. Mary's County, and it would have a ballot question. And, and right here in the bill summary, in the fiscal note, it has the question label. Do you favor changing the method of selecting four of the five members, the St. Mary's County Board of County Commissioners, from the current method of being elected at large by the voters of St. Mary's County, with one member residing in each of the four election districts, to a new method where each of the four members are elected by only the voters of the district in which they are a member of. Um, and it goes on the page, it resides, and the fifth member is elected at large and may reside in any district. So, as I've said, this language was copied directly from Queen Anne County that ran the similar, similar situation back in 2016. Just, just one more question. Thank you for helping me to envision what this would look like. If you can talk about any specific outreach to communities, to especially diverse communities, in terms of getting information that this straw ballot is taking place, and also, do you see any correlation between the fact that the previous bill that we passed in the House was looking at representation specifically for um, you know, communities that are underrepresented, and this bill that the ma the majority um, it basically kind of does the same thing that we we're trying to avoid. So if you can comment on that, because I think we kind of know what. Sure, the, what I, the I, I, yeah, I, I can give a comment on that. So first of all, uh, I, I object the notion um, on Delegate Crosby's bill that when you look at St. Mary's County, we're not a, a county split up in four districts. We are a county, a community. So if you live in Leonardtown, there's a good chance you drive to Mechanicsville or over to Lexington Park, if not weekly, sometimes on a daily basis. So this district that we have arbitrary lines that cross every, every four years and we should be locked into them, I, I think it's a bunch of nonsense. And I think overwhelmingly, uh, the people of St. Mary's would probably reject that bill. And, and if this, that I mean, I think they're happy with the way the current election process is. Um, I know there's been a racial component uh, pointed out to this as far as minority voting. I, I saw that uh, in the bill hearing. And look, I, I think what's going on is, you know, this isn't about race, it's about politics. And you got about 10 or 15 members of the local Democratic Central Committee and their club really geared up and think that this is how they're going to win a seat. They've been unsuccessful in past elections. So they want to change the rules. And, and I tell you, from a personal note, and we got into this a couple years ago on the bill, throwing a racial component into this, it, it's really harmful. Because St. Mary's County has a great track record elect, uh, of electing minority candidates. Uh, Joe Lee Somerville was the first black sheriff that was elected in the state of Maryland. We elected him in like the late 1970s. We had John Lancaster, who was a county commissioner. We elected him to two terms in the late 80s and early 90s. We have an African-American school board member who was elected under the same rules that we did right now, not broken out in district at large. All these guys were elected by the same rules. I mean, she's been elected for six terms now and still continues to serve. And then you look at other races like St. Mary's County, we, we overwhelmingly backed Michael Steele. We ever overwhelmingly backed Charles Lawler against Steny Hoyer. So it's not about race, but it is about political ideology. And I just look at those other bills are just trying to game the system. And I think that's horrible to try to game the system and take away voters' rights. We're talking about threat to democracy all the time. Well, here it is. Here's a bill presented for the second time, HB 447, that takes away voters', voters ability to vote. And to do that without asking their opinion, I think is horrible. And that's the reason why I'd like to pass this bill and take it directly to the voters and get their perspective on that. Thank you. Any other, uh, Delegate Eversall. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for being so lucid on this bill. You referred to another bill, and I wanna know if you think it would be fair to say that other bill was brought because they wanted to make sure that 
people that were not in the majority in your county, people who are in the minority either racially or in other ways, would be able to have a better voice in within our districts. I'm not saying that you agree with that, but was that the reason that bill was brought? I think the reason why the other bill was brought was political. Okay, well, that's not what I asked, though. Do well, you, you asked me what I thought, and I'm answering Yeah, but I want question. kind of a yes, like, do you think that's what, the, that's, what, that's what they were shooting for when they brought that bill? We can, we can characterize it, but I want to know if you think that's what they were going for. Because I think, I, I think the answer is yes to that. Well, that might be the answer that they're going for. I, I don't know what's on their mind. I'll leave that up to the other bill sponsor to, to answer that. But in my opinion, it's completely political. And I'll tell you, and it's, it's, there's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of minorities trying to get trying to win a certain district because the district that they keep pointing out to delegate hasn't hasn't even fielded a candidate two of the last three elections. Right. So you've been so, you've been clear about that, yeah. and that you're going beyond my question. My question would be: This question would not be put to individual districts; it would be put to the de to the delegation to the county at large, right? Right. And so it, the it, same so the same sort of voting procedure that concerns the other sponsor would exist in this bill well like i said i i, I personally believe that other bills are driven by political motivations thank you delegate buckle thank you madam chair and so i, I always have a hard time with this to an extent this bill and this whole issue st mary's county the district voting your county's what about 105 110 thousand i think 112 112 you're, you're you're moving on up that's great is it my understanding, so, so we live close to Washington County. I know Doug Grossman represents Washington County. They're well bigger than you. They're, they're about 160,000 people, roughly. They're larger. And they elect their county commissioners. They have five of them, and they don't have districts at all. They elect five of them countywide. And that seems to be perfectly constitutional and permissible for that county. My county is a little bit smaller than you, around 70-some thousand people. And we select ours. We have three county commissioners. We select them countywide. Do the people, to your understanding of St. Mary's County, have the ability to choose that as an option and say, hey, if, if this is causing contention, we could just get rid of all districts. It's, we're, we're, not, we're not Prince George's County. We're not Montgomery County. We don't have a million people. We only have 100,000 people. It's pretty easy to do a countywide election. Could you do it that way? Because other places seem to be able to do it. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely we could do it that way. Um, the ir ironic thing, uh, Delegate, is more counties I believe, do, do at-large voting, then break it out per geographical district, like St. Mary's, Charles, uh, right. Calvert, Queen Anne's, and, and, and I believe Garrett is the other one. Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that, that would be an option. But and, I think if that was the case, there wouldn't be any component of like, well, you know, we could only elect what we have maybe a... a uh, significant minority population in one district, but not in the whole county. If you went countywide, that would eliminate that issue. That, that, so, so it seems to me sometimes it's a tempest in a teapot of like we want to fight about this, but St. Mary's County has the ability to say, "Hey, we're just we'd like to do it by district," and this is what you're trying to get at. Is that what the people really want? But if you don't want to do it by district, we could just do it countywide, and then this is no longer an issue. Well, I, I, I still think that the countywide vote. I mean, that would be changing from what we've done. Right. And Look, St. Mary's County has had their county broke out in districts for the last 182 years. Right. I don't think there was ever a problem until a couple years ago when people from this local Democratic club thought it might be easier to win a county commissioner seat if we were in single member districts. That's it. Originally, why the county was set up in, in districts, because it's a long, skinny county on a peninsula. We have 440 miles of coastline. And it was originally broke out in districts, so you'd have some type of geographical diversity that have entire county represented. That's the reason why. Um, because if you went at large, you could theoretically have all five county commissioners living in the same, the same street. And I think that was the, the original intent and reason why they were broke out. But to answer your question, yes. Now, as far as this bill goes, I, I think it's a question of, Either we're going to keep what we have, or we're going to switch over to a single member district. And I think that, that's, that's, I guess, what I was getting at. We, we've spent a lot of time, and it's very concerning to the people from this one county, and we want to affect all these other counties who apparently don't really want to be brought into the bill. But at the end of the day, it seems to me you have the constitutional ability. If the legislature of Maryland makes you change your district voting, it sounds to me like you're going to go back and change to all countywide at large voting, same way my county does it, same way Washington County does it. And there's not going to be a blessed thing that anybody can do about that. It's completely legal. So it seems like we're kind of 
you know, we're, we're dancing on the head of a pin. It's not going to have an impact. I, guess. Uh, I, I agree. And um, that could remain an option. But we kind of like to try to the reason for the poll is to kind of squash that and, um, you know, get some guidance from the voters. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you. That concludes the thank testimony you. on how.